Hey everybody, happy Easter. I hope you've had a great day. My name is Kim Danke. I am your Shibboleth new member fast track instructor. And we have a two part webinar series that starts tonight right now. And part two will be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Hey, Deborah, I'm glad you're joining me tonight. And we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping until 8.03. And basically the housekeeping is, is to set your chat to all panelists and attendees. That way, when you chat, everybody will be able to see it. So what you'll do is whether you're on your computer or your phone, you're going to click the chat button. And then where it says all panelists, click there. Then choose the option for all panelists and attendees. Happy Easter, Deborah. And then once you've got your chat set, tell me where you're from and if you are here because you are new or if you came because you want a refresh. <clears throat> and I also love to know how you heard about Shibboleth. So if you don't mind telling me that, that would be awesome. Hey, Becky. Hey. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad you heard about it through me on Facebook. Did you ever get that worked out with Sherry last week? If not, we still can take care of it. I just was so busy, Becky. Let's see. Jen. Jen <clears throat> is new. Heard about the program from three friends, Tammy Bagwell, Jennifer Tanner, and Daniel Shakespeare. <coughs> awesome from Canton awesome D rental sort of new okay I understand we've got a refresh Flagler Beach welcome and Deborah from Greenwood Indiana here for a refresh and heard about it from Jim Wright awesome awesome we've got a phone number raising their hand or something Glad everybody's here with me. <clears throat> okay, well, it's 8.03. I give, hey, Deidre on Facebook. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Yes, ma'am. I love it. And Robbie, Robbie from Alabama. Robbie, I just left Alabama. Where are you from in Alabama? I just literally walked in the door. I always leave Alabama in time to get home for this webinar. Lynette, where's, where's that near? I've heard of it. I just don't know what it's near. I was in Pell City, Alabama. Okay. Terry from Ackworth, new member, heard through a few friends and from church friends, Julie Marandino. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Close to Auburn. I thought it was, there's a, <laughs> we've had a great day over in Alabama, Deidre. Okay, well, I'm glad that you are here with us, Robbie. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Kim Danke. I am your new member Fast Track Instructor. And what that means is we have a two-part webinar series to do. But in our website, under the dashboard, you're going to click on Fast Track. There's seven laps, sort of intended to be for seven days. But, hey, Leanne on Facebook, um, but if you take two weeks to do them, that's fine. But the sooner you do them, the sooner you understand and know and can put everything into play. OK, so it's really important that we go ahead and at least work our way through the fast track. It is one of those self-guided, self-directed, self-paced things. But as you all know, if we don't take something seriously and put forth effort into learning it, it just gets put on the back burner. Anything that is um, a priority has to be raised to the top, even if it's momentarily while you are learning what you need to learn and then applying it to get your mind, body, and everything else used to changing up habits that we may have had for 50 something years. I don't know how old you are, but I'm just going to use 50. Um, but you've had habits for a long time that we need to change. So we're going to talk about some of those tonight. Now, what tonight is, it's a lifestyle overview. So I'm kind of doing Shibboleth in a nutshell. 
And what that means to you is everything that I go over tonight, you can start applying tomorrow. You really can. I, I believe that you can figure it out. Um, but if not, tomorrow, at least put in the four things that don't even have to do with food. And you can put that in. And then tomorrow night, there's one hour on food combinations, which is one of the secrets of Shibboleth. So you'll want to make sure that um, that uh, we come, that you come back tomorrow night. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you. It's going to be a PowerPoint. I don't want you to feel like you need to screenshot this or anything like that. This is actually already on the website. So it, it'll be there for you. You don't have to worry about not seeing it again. If you're going to do anything at all tonight, what I would say to do is to take notes because tomorrow night's class, I do ask you some questions and if you've got them written down, you can pop those right in because I do know that kind of that teacher, student, let me question you and see if you were listening type atmosphere helps people learn. So if you're going to do anything, please take notes. All right. So this is the Shibboleth lifestyle. It's not a diet. Now, I do have to say that if you are sort of coming into this thing thinking diet, most of the time people are kind of excited about starting something new. So if that's the way you're starting off, bank on that excitement, okay? But by the time we get to maintenance and where we're going, we've got to think of this as a lifestyle. But if you're coming in thinking diet, you know, I understand. Think of that in a positive way and use it to your benefit. But we've got to get to the lifestyle thinking. So tonight, I'm going to go over the basics of Shibboleth. And the reason I feel like the basics are so important is if you don't even know the language that we're talking when you're reading posts in the groups or reading the website or listening to videos, then, then you're not going to have any idea what we're talking about. So I just like to lay all the basics out, all the terminology and the new language that you're going to hear. I like to lay it all out now so that you have that foundation <clears throat> to go ahead and get started. So on planet Shibboleth, because you're now a citizen of planet Shibboleth, on planet Shibboleth, there are two modes. We're either in weight loss mode or maintenance mode. Most people start off in weight loss mode, although I do have a few that just start off in maintenance. That's okay too. But most people are starting off in weight loss mode. And there's three differences between these two modes, just three, because the basics of this lifestyle are exactly that. They are the basics. They are the foundations. This is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, living the Shibboleth lifestyle, okay? But there are three differences between weight loss and maintenance. One is simply the number of holidays that you can use in the calendar month. We're going to talk about what a holiday is in just a moment. Two is how you eat fruit. I know that might sound funny, but there is a difference between how you should eat fruit if you're trying to lose weight as compared to just trying to maintain your weight loss. Three is your mindset. So if you're starting off in that diet mindset, just let it work to your benefit in the beginning. But by the time you get to maintenance, we've got to be at the understanding that this is something for a lifetime, okay? And that's what's important. You want something to be able to work for you for a lifetime, right? We don't want to stop doing what we're doing that's creating the success that we're having because then we go back the other way. Okay, so we got to learn to get to that lifestyle mindset. So on Shibboleth, there are two types of days, two types of days, that's it. But if you joined as a Tiger's Eye member, when you go in to journal your day and you click on that little drop down menu and that drop down menu pops up 12 different types of days, your mind might be blown in the beginning. What the heck is all of this stuff? Don't pay attention to anything on there except for perfect day and holiday. That's it. We have to put blinders on in the beginning. Don't get distracted by the other advanced topics that you can learn about because those advanced topics won't make any sense at all if you don't understand the foundation of the lifestyle. So in the very beginning, blinders on, perfect day or holiday, that's it. We're not going to worry about anything else. How many holidays are allowed? Well, first of all, maybe you have heard the word cheat day before. 
So we don't cheat on Planet Shibboleth, okay? Cheating, in my opinion, because I am a master degree educator that has been a school teacher and a principal, and I don't like cheating. Who does? Cheating is never good. Cheating has a negative connotation. Why would we want to think of eating foods that are off plan for a celebration like I had today celebrating Easter? Why would we think of that as negative where cheating has that negative connotation? We call it a holiday. A holiday doesn't have a negative connotation, okay? So we call it a holiday, not a cheat day. But when you are in weight loss mode, you can use up to six holidays in a calendar month. But once you get to maintenance, you can use up to 12 holidays in a calendar month. Now, everything I focus on in the new member fast track group, though, is just six, okay? Because most people are in that weight loss mode. So you can use up to six holidays. Now, we've just started a brand new month. So I would kind of look at my month and say, okay, when, when might I need those six holidays? If you've already used some of them up, I would count them. I would because, you know, we're, we don't want more than six holidays in a calendar month. Most people had one today um, and that got used up. One of them did anyway. So this is how we have a balanced lifestyle. Six will help us get the results that we want. But once we get to maintenance, if you utilize up to 12 and your other 18 to 19 days in a month are actually perfect days, not okay days, then you will maintain that success that you have. So how do you have what we call a perfect day? You follow the Shibboleth shield. So after two perfect days, your body gets into a state called EFB, efficient fat burning. Now, you know, we use the general term weight loss, but we don't want to just lose weight in ways that is damaging our body. And people do that. And when they're not getting enough uh, protein and other things, and we'll get enough protein, you'll get everything you need on Planet Shibboleth. But... <clears throat> But sometimes people, they end up losing muscle. They end up losing heart mass and um, ligaments and tendons. Our body will eat what it needs to to get its energy. But we've got to target. We want to specifically target stored energy, which is fat, so that we can burn that off. And that's what the Shibboleth lifestyle will help you do. So after two perfect days, your body gets into EFB, which is efficient fat burning. So to have a perfect day, you follow the Shibboleth shield. Now, there are five components to the shield. I like to call these my five daily disciplines because these are things I should be doing anyway. And so I just put them all into play every day that I am having a perfect day. We got to drink our water. We're going to journal our foods. We're going to com combine foods in a way that control insulin which is secret alert right there, portion, we're going to portion control, and we are going to space our food out and stop grazing. So we call these water, journal, combinations, portions, and timing. So component number one of the shield is water. We've got to drink at least a half a gallon of water every single day. Um, now that's on a perfect day. People ask me all the time, do I still need to get my water in on a holiday? Well, I would. Here's why. If you're, if you're used to drinking all that water and then you just all of a sudden don't drink it, cramps in your feet and your calves and stuff because your body's used to getting that nice macronutrient. We call water a macronutrient on Planet Shibboleth, but your, water's, I mean, your body's used to that water and it needs it. So at least a half a gallon of water every day. That's just something that you put into play every day. We should be doing it anyway. So really a half a gallon is just four of these, just four of these in a day, but shoot for a gallon. And what happens is your body is going to be more mentally and physically satisfied. So I want you to think about this daily discipline as something that you can measure and you can take action on. You'll know whether or not you hit this in order to say that you've had your water. Um, 
half a gallon is 64 ounces. If you need to measure and know it that way, up to 128 ounces. Let's look at this third bullet point here. A dehydrated body will not efficiently give up fat or waste, and we need our body to be doing both of those things. So we're simply going to start getting our water in if we haven't been doing it. A lot of people have told me, oh, I always get my water in. And then when I ask them to start measuring, they're really surprised that they weren't getting in nearly the amount of water that they needed to be getting in. Component number two of the shield is to journal. We're going to journal daily. Journaling helps us make more mindful decisions rather than eating mindlessly. I mean, if you're like me, I have stuck my hand in many a bag and put whatever it was in my mouth or opened up many a cookie jar and put whatever it was in my mouth. I've done that, but we're not going to eat mindlessly anymore because mindless eating is hurting us. So we're going to have make more conscious decisions, more mindful decisions by writing down everything that we eat. So if we bite it, we write it. If we nibble it, we scribble it. If we drink it, we ink it. And if we <coughs> hog it, we log it. Okay, so no matter what we put in our mouth, we're going to write it down. And it's just as important to um, journal a holiday. And there is a little box at the bottom of a journal that you can write in there how you feel. So let's say that you've had a great week of perfect days and then some somehow your holiday, which you could really do whatever you want to on a holiday, but people do sometimes say that a holiday will not make them feel very good because they overdo it. Um, that's the type of thing that we want you to write down because you thinking about that and writing that down is going to help you. Hey, Patty, I'm glad you're here. So this is uh, something that you're going to want to do daily. Write down everything that you eat. Component number three is combinations. We're going to eat properly combined meals. We're going to eat in a way that controls insulin, also known as the fat bus. That's what we call insulin, the fat bus. Properly combined meals keep away the fat bus. And I'm going to go over this tonight on one slide as an overview, but tomorrow night we've got one full hour, one full hour on this. Thank you, Patty. Um, component number four of the shield is portions. We're going to eat properly portioned meals from a six to eight inch plate using the two hand rule. Now, the reason we have a smaller plate is really for that visual so that we think we have a full plate, but we're just eating off of a small plate, but I don't really care what size plate you have. You're going to use your two hands. That's it. Close your fingers up, move your thumbs out of the way, put your hands together as close as possible, then lower your hands down right over your food, okay? And you don't want it to be thicker than the thickest part of your hand. And you do not want to be able to see your food sticking out around your hands. So these are our portion control. These are our measuring tools. We take our measuring tools with us wherever we go. So if I'm at home, I can use my measuring tool. If I'm out of town, like I've been in Alabama, I can use my measuring tools. If I go to a restaurant, I have taken my measuring tools because we don't make it complicated. They're just our two hands. Now, our tummies are not bigger than that. So that's why we want to not put more in our tummy. It's not bigger than that. Now, most of the time, people understand portion control because when people decide I need to lose weight, I need to burn fat, whatever they want to say, then they automatically think I got to eat less food. And that is true. That is true. And if you're taking notes, please write this down. There are 3,500, so 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. In order to lose one pound of fat, you've got to be in a calorie deficit of that amount. Here's the deal. That's not happening in one day. That happens over a period of days. But we combine this with combinations. We put this together with the whole system that Shibola is, and we really get some supernatural results. I promise you they are. I mean, Travis lost like 75 or 100 pounds or something in six months. I mean, it took him 30 years to get where he was, changed his life in six months. 
I lost 50 pounds in five months. I didn't even know I had 50 pounds to lose. I was trying to lose 35 pounds and I lost 50. So I said, Lord, thank you very much. I'll take that. Um, so now I've been maintaining that now for about 19 months or so. But but most people know they need to eat less. So this portion control part is important, but it's not the only thing. We use the rest of the system to get us all the results that we need. Okay, so number five is timing. Now we've been over water. Y'all think right now, water. I can get my water in. Journal, yep, I can write down what I'm eating. Combinations, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. We'll teach you some simple things you can do tonight that you can get started tomorrow if you haven't been to the grocery store yet. Portions, you can start that tomorrow. Okay, so those are the four things that you have to do in order to say that you've had a perfect day. Okay, so it's just those four. But this one is about optimization, but it's extremely important. And you don't want to go over the amounts that you can have. Okay. Now you can have up to three meals a day. And we say breakfast for the father, lunch for the son, and dinner for the Holy Spirit. Three times to sit down and tell the Lord thank you for food that He has given you to eat, the proper com combined foods the right portions foods, and that they're going to be yummy too. Um, we would like for you to eat those four to six hours apart. So let's just say you're a breakfast eater and you eat at eight. Maybe you have lunch at noon and dinner at six. That first gave you a four hour time frame. The second was a six hour time frame. That would really be best. That would be best. It would be best if you didn't use um, things between breakfast and lunch lunch and dinner and dinner and bedtime, it would really be best if you had three eating episodes, um, which could be three meals or it could be two meals and a snack. Now, if you're not a breakfast eater, do not concern yourself with that. You do not have to be a breakfast eater, okay? So whatever time you first eat in the mornings is really breakfast because you are uh, breaking your overnight fast. So, <clears throat> so we'd like for you just to have three meals a day, but we also know that you're coming off possibly some habits of grazing and other things. So you've got to know what to do when you have that moment where you think, oh my goodness, I'm going to go eat a bag of Lay's potato chips, or I'm going to go have some ice cream, or I'm going to go eat a candy bar. We got to have some things that we would want to use in its place. So we have what we call freebies an extra or a snack. Now you can actually use freebies unlimited, but we aren't trying to figure out how can I eat all day, you know, but if you need that in the beginning to stay having a perfect day, then utilize them, okay? And then you can have up to one extra in a day and you could have up to one snack in a day. So those are the things that you can use. Now you keep in mind that freebies would need to be approved and they would need to be listed in the food library. And there's thousands of items in the food library. And an extra would need to be an approved item and it would need to be in the food library. And you wouldn't want to use more than it says that you can use of it. I want to assure you that if you follow this lifestyle like it is planned out, you will get the results that you want. But you got to almost forget anything that you thought you knew about nutrition and don't worry about it and just apply this. That's exactly what Travis said to me the very first time, very first thing I heard. And I was so thankful because I came into this lifestyle with lots of other previous knowledge. And I thought I knew a lot of things and I did know a lot of health things, but I didn't know this system and those health things never helped me lose weight when this did. So Forget everything that you thought you knew about nutrition and, and live this lifestyle like it is meant to be lived and you'll get the results that you want. If you need a snack, it also needs to be an approved snack. Now, when you are working your way through the fast track laps, the seven laps of fast track, I'm going to have you digging into the food library, looking for freebies, looking for extras, looking for snacks. Okay. And this is going to be a good thing. You're going to write those things down that you want to use. Now, let's look at this bullet point, this last bullet point. Keep in mind that we need to stop grazing, okay? What is this? What is this little thing right here? I have all my little teaching tools. See this little guy right here? He's cute, isn't he? He's a cow. We are not cows. We're humans. 
that cow was designed, he has one stomach, but four chambers. Those four chambers were designed to help break down an items, an, I mean, an animal's food who was designed to graze. We were not designed to graze. We have one stomach, one chamber. There's nothing. There's just one stomach. We weren't designed to graze. So, so we got to stop grazing. So let's think about this. If we were to eat breakfast and then have maybe an extra, and then we have lunch, and then we have a snack, and then we have dinner, and then we have freebies all night long before bed, what does that look like? What's that look like, y'all? Y'all can talk to me on here. It's fine. What's that look like? <clears throat> if we ate all that, it would look like what this cow does. What does he do? <laughs> Besides move. It looks like a lot of calories. It does. Yep. Yeah. But it looks like grazing. And we want to stop grazing. So, but, but. With what I just said, that actually is a perfect cheval lift day. Now, you have to keep in mind, though, with this timing aspect, there's good, better, and best. If you had your three meals, an extra, a snack, and utilized some freebies, and it was all approved, it was all portion controlled, and you had your water, you wrote it all down, you would still have a perfect Shabbat lift day. That would be a good day. Let's say that you had three meals and then maybe you just needed a little freebie and so you had a little sugar-free jello. That might be a better Shabbat lift day. And then maybe you are able to do three eating episodes, which we are all able to just do that. You just sometimes in the beginning, I want you to be aware of what all you can utilize to keep yourself perfect. Okay. Um, three eating episodes may be, well, it would be one of the best days. All right. So there's good, better, and best. They're all perfect. So not every single day that you live the lifestyle in a perfect day is going to be exactly the same. So just keep in mind and just know that there are days where you might utilize all those things and there are days you might not. They're all still perfect days. Now, the ones where you don't use those things can help you get better results, but there's no reason to come out of EFB because you don't want to come out of EFB if you don't have to, if you don't have a holiday planned, okay? because we have a lovely system, and we're going to talk more about that in just a second, of how to make this whole lifestyle work. Okay, um, is this available to watch again? Oh yeah, Susan, is it, I don't know if it's Suzanne or Susan, but it is, probably Suzanne, it is already on the website on demand in lap two of Fast Track. Yep, so you can watch it again. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so now we've been over the five things. Do you see how these are really five daily disciplines? Getting my water in daily. That's a discipline. Learning to write down what I'm eating is a discipline. I also want to let you know, if you are not writing down what you are eating, there would be no way for us to help you with a journal review. We have mentors that monitor the chats and do mentor appointments and journal reviews Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you aren't writing down what you eat, they won't be able to help you. So help yourself because if you need help, they can't help you if they don't know what you've been eating. And we can, I honestly sometimes can't remember what I've eaten that morning. I'd have to go back and look and see what I wrote down. And I find a lot, I talk to a lot of people about their food and I find that it's the same thing all over the place. And then we're going to combine foods in a way that control insulin. We're going to portion control it and we're going to stop grazing. Okay, so how do you put together a properly combined meal? Well, this is what you're going to want to learn about this. There are seven categories of food, just seven. And you'll, when, as we're going through this today, we're going to be talking mostly whole foods, chicken breast, some yogurt, um, cheese, broccoli. You know, we're going to be talking whole foods like that kind of stuff lima beans and just like that but there is boxed foods and all kinds of other things on shibboleth you know shibboleth brought chips and chocolate back into my life when I had cut those things out thinking I was helping myself but I didn't it wasn't working I'd learned things and so I'd cut those things out but now I know how to eat the appropriate chips and the appropriate chocolate and I'm happy about it 
Okay, so category one is a lean protein, or you might see the abbreviations LP. Category two is a fibrous carb, or FC. Category three is an energy carb, or EC. Category four is protein plus fat, or PF. Category five is fruit, or FR, also known as an antioxidant carb, or AC. And the only reason I explained that one that way with the two different names is because when I first started and I was looking through everything on the website, I came across something that said AC on it. And I just thought, okay, well, that's fruit. When I started teaching this, I just wanted to make sure that you had seen in the very beginning that fruit could also be called antioxidant carbs. So you wouldn't go, where's this new name coming up? Um, category six is superfood or S. F and category seven is shellfish or SHF. Okay, shellfish is really just a lean protein, like number one. The reason that shellfish got pulled off of just the general lean protein category is because due to medical reasons and biblical reasons, some people don't want to eat shellfish. So they might be allergic to it or biblically, they may not want to eat it. So it just got pulled off on its own. So it's category seven shellfish. But if you're talking to someone and you're talking about um, carrots and they say, oh, you're going to need to have a lean protein and a fibrous carb with that. If you're a shellfish eater, you can actually pull your lean protein from either one, category one or seven. Y'all give me some thumbs up if that makes sense. That category one and seven are really just lean proteins. They just got pulled off. Does that make sense, y'all? Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Good, 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 good. Okay. And <clears throat> so all fish is up here in your lean protein category, but all the other critters that live in water, that even if they don't have a shell, are in shellfish. The reason I say that octopus doesn't have a shell, but we just put it in shellfish. Okay. All right. So we've got the bookends of the program, category one and category seven. They're both lean proteins and they work the same. Category two, your fibrous carbs, that's where you're going to find green beans, broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, but we have over 60 approved bread or bread type items in that category. That's a hallelujah moment for most people. We do not exclude any macronutrients on Planet Shibboleth. We just teach you how to use them and tell you which ones are the best to buy in the grocery store. All you're doing is making some simple swaps in the grocery store and putting some different foods together. It's amazing. Energy carbs, these bring an insulin release. These, are, you've got to be very careful with these. These are your potatoes, corn, most of your lighter colored beans and all of your peas. That's where energy carbs are. Protein plus fat, this is where your whole eggs are. All cuts of steak, most pork products, chicken with skin, dark meat chicken, some cheese, things like that. Fruit, all your fruits and fruit. Superfood, if you're writing notes, please write this down. A food qualifies to be a superfood if it has all four macronutrients in there. On Planet Shibboleth, we consider water a macronutrient. So in that superfood, there would be water, protein, carbs, and fat. So that's how an item qualifies to be a superfood. So that's where your nut butters are going to be, your nuts, your seeds, avocado, um, most of your darker colored beans. So there's a lot right there in the superfoods. Okay, so if you're taking notes, here comes the general guidelines. Five of these categories don't even have to be combined. You could eat them alone and be okay. Now, the reason I like to tell you this is because what you're going to learn on Planet Shibboleth is how to make good decisions in every situation where you can find yourself having to make a food decision. Because I go to a lot of luncheons for my job, a lot of luncheons. And sometimes I, will, I go up to that luncheon and I look at the 
the meals or the foods they're serving. And I think fat bus, fat bus, fat bus. Well, when I say fat bus, that means those are foods that are going to bring an insulin release. And I don't want an insulin release because the insulin is a hormone and it will collect fat. And I don't want that. I don't want to collect new fat while I'm trying to access and burn stored fat. So I hope that makes sense. But then when I'm in this lunch line of, of a, for a luncheon, I get down there and they have a piece of steak or they've got a piece of chicken. I could eat it by itself without anything else on my plate and have a perfect lunch. That is called situational eating, making a good decision in that particular situation. Now, a lot of times you have to become less enamored with the food that is an, at an event than the talking that could go on or the business connections that you can go on. Be less enamored with the food and more enamored with the other thing, people or another reason. But that's just a, a discipline we're going to have to learn to teach ourselves. Okay, so the five categories that can be eaten alone are category one, category two, category four, category six, and category seven. Okay, so if you're writing that down, it was one, two, four, six, and seven. So those are the ones that can be eaten alone. Another reason that's really good is let's say that you want to start a perfect day tomorrow and you say, I don't know what I'm going to eat. Well, if you like eggs, you could scramble yourself some eggs tomorrow morning, put them underneath your two hands. Really, men could have up to three eggs, too, for ladies is really reasonable. And then you've got a perfect breakfast. There you go. You could have your very, very first perfect breakfast tomorrow, and it would be super simple. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's talk about those that we skipped. We skipped over energy carb, and we skipped over fruit. Those must be combined properly. So for example, if you want to eat an energy carb, it must be eaten with a category, uh, with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. Now remember that lean protein can come from category one or category seven, and you would also need a fibrous carb with it. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you want to have some corn. Well, what you would do, because you're going to use your, you're going to use your measuring tools, you're going to put your corn right here. It's going to be about a quarter of a cup. And then you're learning now, okay, I'm eat, I, I, corn is an energy carb, and I'm going to have some corn with my dinner. I must have that with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So let's just think, I'm going to keep it real simple. Chicken breast and green beans. A classic meal. Let me tell you what happens. This is really important. This is the science behind what happens. The corn is going to elevate your blood sugar. Your pancreas is going to secrete insulin to deal with the blood sugar elevation. Okay, so already right now we've got insulin spiking to deal with the blood sugar elevation that came from the corn. Okay, but you're learning, I combine this with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So this is what happens. The protein in the chicken breast and the fiber in the green beans are going to neutralize the insulin release that came from the corn. There's also no fat in that meal to be collected. So do you see how we put that together? There's no fat in that meal. And we utilize the other foods that we put with the energy carb to neutralize the insulin release. We used food all within the, that one meal to control the insulin that was coming from something that you were eating with that meal. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. And what you're going to do in this lifestyle is you're going to start putting together some meals that you like. Always keep a list of the things that you like and you put together and they can be your go-to meals. Um, so it's amazing. The science behind this is absolutely amazing. I also want you to think about this. At a quarter of a cup of corn, you didn't overeat corn. Now, I went to Raise on the River for my birthday. And when I looked down at their menu, 
it said that you could get a one pound potato. Oh, I, for, I just started cracking up and I took a picture of that. And I said, a one pound potato, have mercy. Imagine, imagine what that is doing to your blood sugar. Imagine the amount of insulin that your body is having to secrete to deal with a one pound potato. Imagine that. But see, that would not, if you wanted to do that, you could still do that on planet Shibboleth. You just do that on a holiday. Okay, but you wouldn't want to do that on a perfect day. But just I just like to explain the difference, because if you're portion controlling and eating in a way that controls insulin, this is going to bring great results for you. All right. Let's talk about fruit, because fruit was one that we skipped. Now, do you remember? Do you remember how in the very beginning of this uh, webinar, I said there was three differences between the two modes? We got weight loss mode and maintenance mode. Number of holidays is one, six to 12. And then how you eat fruit was the second one. When you are in weight loss mode, fruit must be eaten with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So just like that energy carb we were talking about, fruit's got to be eaten the same way. Now, is fruit good for us? Yeah, fruit's got some great antioxidants in it. That's why it's called antioxidant carb. But it also has fructose in it, which is sugar. And so it still elevates our blood sugar. Our pancreas still secretes insulin. And our body still has to deal with that insulin. Now, I'm just, I, I'm, I have nothing against Weight Watchers. I've never done Weight Watchers. I don't know anything about Weight Watchers. But I do know that when I see my friends on that are doing Weight Watchers eat entire bowls of watermelon and like they're doing their body good, I start to freak out just a little bit because watermelon is very sugary. I don't know what they're going to go and eat and later with that. They have a blood sugar elevation. And eating entire bowls of it because they called it like zero points or something. I don't know. But think about that. So it, I say that too, because if, if there's somebody on here that has done Weight Watchers before, that might be something that was creating a problem, you know, because sometimes people lean on fruit when they are going to lose weight, thinking it's so good for you. And it is good for you. But if we want to burn fat, which is what we want to do. We've got to treat fruit differently in weight loss mode. Now, once you get to maintenance mode, it's really still, if you're having a perfect day, if you're going to have some fruit with a meal, it's really best to still combine that properly, okay? But if you want a piece of fruit as a snack, when you are in maintenance, that's okay at that point. But if you're in weight loss mode, fruit must be combined properly. Y'all give me some thumbs up if you understand what I'm meaning by all of that. Awesome, Becky. Thank you. Good, D. Okay, Deborah. Awesome. Good, 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 Robbie. Okay. <clears throat> so now I've told you about energy carbs and fruit and how they must be eaten. They're going to be eaten with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. Now what I need to tell you is what you don't want to eat with protein plus fat. So first of all, protein plus fat can be eaten by itself. Now, most of the time, we're not building up some keto fat plate, okay? We're not doing that. This is not keto. Thank you, Suzanne. This and Kim and Jen and Terry. I saw all those pop up. Um, this is not keto. And we're not all about high, high fat. We're, we're, we're higher protein, a little bit lower, but reasonable fat and lower carbs and, and combining foods, you know, because that's, that's what gets the results. Okay, so if you wanted to have that egg meal for breakfast and you like eggs, you can do that. But most of the time when you're eating a protein plus fat, let's say that you want some steak, most of the time you're going to be combining that with something like green beans, broccoli, side salad, you know. Um, but what you're not going to eat, this is very important to know, what you're not going to eat with this protein plus fat is anything that brings an insulin release because insulin is the fat bus and we don't want the bus picking up the fat and storing it. So we're not going to eat it with three categories. We're not going to have protein plus fat with energy carbs, which is category three, fruit, which is category five, 
or superfoods, which is category six. So if you're taking notes, write that down. We're just not going to have category fours with energy carbs, fruit, or superfoods. And I hope that makes sense. So let's talk about that classic plate of, let's talk about that one pound potato at Ray's on the River. So you go to Ray's on the River, you have that one pound potato and you know, they, they cook some good steaks. You put that steak with it. You can do that on a holiday, but I want to talk about what's happening when you eat that, especially a one pound potato. But let's say you eat that potato. What's going to happen? Y'all say this out loud with me. My blood sugar is going to elevate. My pancreas is going to secrete insulin to deal with that blood sugar elevation. And if you eat a one pound potato, your pancreas is having to secrete a lot of insulin, not just enough to deal with a quarter cup of something. It's, deal, it's, it's secreting a lot. So the insulin, it comes out to do a job. It comes out to regulate your blood sugar. But instead of, instead of regulating blood sugar, that insulin gets super excited. It says, wait a minute, they ate this with some fat. Let me go collect that fat. And that's what it does. Insulin is a growth hormone focused on fat storage. Now there are other growth hormones in our body that are good for us and they don't focus on fat storage, but insulin focuses on fat storage. So we've got to control insulin. If you are pre-diabetic or type two diabetic, this can also help with that as well. So um, just know that that can correct itself pretty quick. I was teaching a man um, this. He and his wife came to class on Monday. He ate properly for four days and already had to cut his insulin that he was having to give himself in half. It was amazing. I was so excited. And then he went to the doctor and they talked about his new eating habits and everything. And um, it was great news. Um, Yeah, that well, one pound potato is too much potatoes. But if you want to eat potato, what you would do is you wouldn't eat it with a steak. Okay, that's that's a holiday because you remember I said you don't eat category fours with a three. So you wouldn't do that. But let's say that you do want potato. You might make yourself a 96% lean ground beef and have like a half of a small potato and then maybe some broccoli. That makes a nice meal. And that one would be an approved meal if you make that at home. Okay, so I hope that all makes sense. Now let's look. Now remember tomorrow night is one hour talking foods that come in these categories. Let's look at these colored columns real quick. The blue column is a fast weight loss column. And what this means when that says one LP, that means category one lean protein. And then this 6SF means category six superfood. And then this 2FC means category two fibrous carb. Y'all tell me if that makes sense. Because what I don't want you to think is that this is quantity. This is not quantity. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, that's not quantity. That's just the category number and the abbreviation. Obviously, to get a lot of information in a chart, then you would need to do that. So Becky, this category one lean protein might be chicken breast. So this category six superfood might be some black beans. And this category two fibrous carb might be some green beans. Um, maybe you do some, yeah, okay, good. And then this one right here, this, this one, look what they're doing right here in this one. This is maybe some chicken with some shrimp with some asparagus. So that's, that's a lean protein with some shellfish and some fibrous carb. Okay. That, so this is fast weight loss. If you want faster weight loss, then you do the combinations here. Now I do want you to know that this is a very small list of combinations. Once you get to, I think it's lap six in the fast track laps, you get an advanced combination chart to kind of broaden your horizons because we all like variety, right? So there's more than this, but see in the beginning, you don't need more than this. You just need the foods that you like to do a simple week's worth of stuff to get the results that you need and start applying these daily disciplines. You don't need 5,000 things week one. We just need simple stuff week one. So this would be eating a protein plus fat by itself. So let's say the eggs. This might be eating steak and side salad. 
This might be just eating a bowl of pinto beans. Um, this one might be pintos and collards. I, I have this one. Oh, look, look at this one. This superfood and fibrous carb, that could be a peanut butter and jelly. This could be peanut butter, the approved peanut butter. There's a lot of approved peanut butters. And then this could be your fibrous carb bread. And then you could use a sugar-free jelly as a condiment. If you don't like sugar-free jelly, there is a good, good jam that is with stevia. Yes, Kim, this is fast. Yellow is faster and red is the fastest. It's like you would be blowtorch and fat like you'd blowtorch butter. It's gonna come off your body super fast. So we got fast, faster, fastest. Now what this MR means right here are meal replacements. Specifically, what we call negative two and negative three meal replacements. I don't wanna get overly, I'm not gonna talk much about that tonight. We can talk more about that tomorrow night. And I do talk about it if you're watching the, um, the lap videos and stuff. Negative two and negative three meal replacements are meal replacements that are excellent for weight loss. So those are right there in this yellow column. And then this column, you're going to see a lot of the MCT added, which we're going to talk about in two slides away. OK, all right. So this was kind of an overview and got to come back tomorrow night for the full hour on this. So here's your important rules. Your category one lean protein with a category two fibrous carb cooked up in MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride, or category seven shellfish with category two fibrous carb cooked up in MCT oil are your fastest fat burning combinations. So most people aren't going to do this breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But if you can do this, you know, three or four, five times a week, especially in the beginning, then you're going to have some of your fastest fat burning combinations and it's going to go great. If you want to eat a three, which is an energy carb or a five, which is fruit, you must eat it with a lean protein. It can come from category one or category seven and a fibrous carb, which is category two. And then we just don't eat category four protein plus fats with energy carbs, fruit or superfoods. Now think about this. Your category fours, which has the protein plus fat. And by the way, y'all, the word fat in that is not a bad word. Our body needs fats for certain functions. And what's going to happen is our body will use those, use it up for the certain functions that it needs. But also fat gets used up as energy and dissipates as heat as long as it's not overconsumed. So portion controlling a protein plus fat is totally fine but we don't want to eat it with anything that brings an insulin release. And that's those three categories. And then this is very important for eating out anywhere that you are not cooking at home, anywhere out where you don't know how they cooked it. All meat at a restaurant, just consider it a category four protein plus fat. Example, you think you want to have some corn at a restaurant, so you know you need to have it with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So you're going to pick chicken and green beans. The problem is you don't know how they cooked that chicken. They probably cooked it in an unapproved oil, which turned that lean protein into a protein plus fat because they added the fat. You don't want that with the corn. So because at a restaurant, we don't know how they're cooking that, just consider all meat at a restaurant a protein plus fat. That's going to keep you safe because you're going to know I don't order it with energy carbs, fruit, or superfoods. And over a period of time, you're going to start to figure out what energy carbs are that you like. Fruit, all fruit is in fruit. And you're going to figure out what the superfoods are that you like. In fact, you're going to do a lot of that as you work your way through the fast track laps. Okay, so this is a very fun topic for me. Approved cooking oils. This is secret alert right here. So one of the big giant secrets in Shibboleth is combining foods in a way that control insulin. Number two is right here, cooking in an appropriate oil. Most of us before our Shibboleth world were cooking in olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, that type of thing. Those oils are long chain triglycerides. They have a great propensity to be stored on the body as fat. Here's why. 
They are a longer fat lipid and they're very dense. They're hard to break through. So it's longer to burn it up. Think of a candle wick. A longer candle wick takes longer to burn up than a shorter candle wick. And something that is very dense takes a long time to break down rather than something that's not quite as dense. So since I started Shibboleth, I have not bought olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil at all. I buy medium chain triglyceride. And if you want to make your life a lot easier, I would just go to the Shibboleth store and buy the Zero Drag brand. Well, you don't have to buy anything from Shibboleth, but the reason I say this is a convenience for you. You can drive around town going in and out of stores looking for an MCT oil, or you can just simply go on to the website and have it at your door in a couple of days and know it's going to be the best of the best. Um, so the brand is called Zero Drag. And um, it has been optimized for cooking because that's how we're going to use it. We're going to cook with it. And it also has 30 calories less than most, most other MCT oils out there. Now, I want you to notice that, that this is a very important aspect right here. See where it says 100%? We're not just looking to use medium chain triglycerides. We're, we're looking to use 100% medium chain triglycerides. MCTs have almost no propensity to be stored on the body as fat. Compare that to a great propensity to be stored on, as our, on our body as fat to almost no propensity to be stored on the body as fat. I think I want that one. Okay, so I've just switched over to medium chain triglycerides. Now, we're gonna use medium chain triglycerides for three reasons. Cooking, you can cook in a pot or a pan, you can grill, however it is that you cook, you can use medium chain triglycerides. And in our approved recipes, you could use medium chain triglycerides. And if you're making some of our approved salad dressings, then you could use medium chain triglycerides. But those are the only three ways that you're gonna use it. Um, and the reason I explain that is because people, there is a lot of noise out there. So you remember how in the beginning I said, forget everything that you thought you knew. They may not have been in the same nutritional situation as, as we are. We wanted to access and burn stored energy. Well, there's a lot of health things can be used for different ways. And if you're a bodybuilder, then you can use medium chain triglycerides right at the last minute before you get on stage and you're making all your muscles and all of that. And that will benefit you in that way. But I'm, I'm assuming we're not there. I'm, I wasn't, I'm still not. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna be doing that. So that's why we only use it for those three reasons that I talked about, cooking, recipes, and uh, salad dressings. We're not gonna take it as a supplement. So you never feel like you need to get it in. Never feel like, yeah, I got to get in my MCT. If you are cooking with it, we would love for you to get it in, okay? But if you're not, never feel like you need to take it as a supplement. If you have ever made bulletproof coffee or put fats in coffee, we're not going to do that. Coffee is a pre-digested drink. There is nothing to slow down fat absorption, even if it's a, a healthier um, MCT. And we're not just going to randomly put it in our shakes and stuff like that. When there's a lot of people out there on Facebook and webinars and YouTube and telling you all these different ways to use these things, but they don't know what your goals are. Okay. They're just talking about how they use it. So we're going to use it for those three reasons. Okay. You can use coconut oil as well. Keep in mind that coconut oil is 66% MCTs, not a hundred. So when you get 100, it means that 100% MCTs have been pulled out of usually coconut oil or palm oil, but the MCT oil does not taste like coconut oil either. Um, an important thing about cooking with coconut, I mean, with, with me, medium chain triglycerides is that it has a low smoke point. So make sure that you cook on low to medium heat, otherwise it will set off your smoke detector. So cook on medium, low to medium heat. And then you can use ghee butter, G-H-E-E, -E, ghee butter. What ghee butter is, it's just butter that has been clarified. It, what clarified means is that it's had all the milk solids pulled out of it. So the milk solids have been pulled out. Therefore, it's just the fats that have been left. And so that will work. 
when you are, I always just say use ghee butter when you need the butter flavor. Maybe you like shrimp scampi or you want to dip some crab legs or some lobster tail in some butter. You could use up to, you can use up to one tablespoon of these for a serving of a meal. So if you're cooking yourself one piece of chicken in a pan, you, you could do one tablespoon. But if you're cooking for the family and you're cooking three or four pieces of chicken in a pan, you could do four tablespoons in there, okay? So, because you would really need it to make it work. And then obviously you can use any zero calorie cooking spray, no matter what it says. Like if it says olive oil on the front and it's a zero calorie cooking spray, you can still use that. It's a zero calorie cooking spray. Okay, this is important. And we're about to wrap up. I've got four slides, but they go over, I go over them very quickly. So you heard me mention the three letters EFB in the beginning. EFB is efficient fat burning. We don't want to just lose weight. We want to specifically target and access stored energy, which is fat. And we do that when we are in EFB. You get into EFB after two perfect days. Two perfect days is following the five components of the Shibboleth Shield. So think about this. This is a management system. This is going to help you manage your choices monthly, weekly, daily. It's going to help you manage your choices even per meal. So we're striving for those perfect days, right? Because that's where we're getting the results. That's where we're getting the fat flaking off, the burning it off. But planned or unplanned, a holiday is coming. That's okay. Enjoy it. Enjoy your holiday. But now you have a plan for after that holiday. Isn't that exciting to know that you have a plan for after the holiday? We don't have to let holiday turn into holiday, turn into holiday, and it's 365 holidays. And we're like, oh my goodness, I've got to do something. We, have a, we now have a plan. So after a holiday, it takes two perfect days to get back into efficient fat burning. I want you to think about what's going on during those two days. What's going on during those two days is your body is getting the insulin that came from any insulin release of the things that you ate on your holiday is dissipating, okay? And then any sugary and starchy things that you ate, they created some glycogen, which is sugar storage in your body that's in your muscles and in your liver. That's getting used up as energy during those two perfect days. And then on that third day, that third perfect day, you see a flame in your timing chart. This is important. This is why you journal every day what type of day that you're having so that it creates an icon in your timing chart and you have a visual of how well you are doing. And then you want to string as many efficient fat burning days together as you can. And then planned or unplanned, a holiday is coming. But now you have a plan for after that. So you see how this really creates nice balance. I wasn't living a very balanced life when it came to food consumption prior to Shibboleth. And now this helps me manage that. Okay, so let's look at this third bullet point. When we are in EFB, our body is going to burn fat, which is just stored energy. For the energy that we need, rather than easily accessible sources of energy, such as unapproved oils or starchy or sugary carbs. So if our body has been having unapproved oils and starchy and sugary carbs, it's going to use that as energy first. And then it rarely gets to that stored energy. Is that, think about that. If you've ever tried to make some changes and somehow it just wasn't working out and you weren't getting the results that you needed, it might have been just because we still had some unapproved oils or we still had some starchy and sugary carbs that weren't working together. So we, we do what Shibboleth says to do so that we get our body into that state where it's burning that fat rather than easily accessible sources of energy, okay? We're going to recap the fat bus. The fat bus is simply insulin. Insulin is a growth hormone, a fat storage hormone. After an insulin re release, fat storage will occur for up to 48 hours, meaning you're out of EFB during that time. That's why it takes the two perfect days to get back into EFB. And this is important for you to know. Insulin also increases appetite. Have you ever had ice cream and then you wanted chips and then you wanted a chocolate chip cookie and then you wanted a pickle and then you wanted something else and then... That's because insulin sends your appetite off the charts. 
So after the fat bus has been on its rounds, it just takes two perfect days to get back into efficient fat burning. And then we string EFB days together and then planned or unplanned a holiday is coming. And then we get back into EFB. And I mean, it's really a nice little uh, plan. But remember, if you're in weight loss mode, you don't want to have more than six holidays in a month so that you can get the results that you're going for. What are you going to eat this week? I want you to go into the Fast Track Labs, lap number one, and look at the new member food library and some of the other documents that are in there. These are very important to you. Make a list of seven lean proteins that you like and seven fibrous carbs that you like. And you're simply going to start putting together some of those for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's that simple. And if you can get your hands on some MCT oil this week, cook it up with some MCT oil. If you can't, no worries. You could use coconut oil, zero calorie cooking spray, that type of thing. If you are already eating Pop-Tarts or cereal or something like that, you want to figure out a meal replacement that could take that place that's going to help you, not hurt you. So throw in a few meal replacements for simplicity. I probably ate 20 Mighty Muffins in my first 20 days of Shibboleth. They're delicious. They have 20 or to 22 grams of protein in them. And they kept me satisfied and they tasted good. So I really, I really liked those a lot. So keep it super simple in the beginning as you're trying to learn this. And then as you continue to live and learn the lifestyle, you'll branch out. You'll naturally branch out. I want you to make sure that you take advantage of our awesome resources. If you are a Facebook user, we have some support groups. And if you're working your way through the Fast Track laps on the website, then you will automatically ask to get into those groups. Familiarize yourself with our awesome website. And guess what the Fast Track laps do? They help you do that by little activities that I kind of give you. It's kind of like homework. I really want you to treat this like the class that you wish that you had taken in school, but they didn't even offer it. You didn't even have the opportunity to take it. But now it's very important and you just treat it like it's a class you never got. I want you to make a getting started mentor appointment, but make it for next week. I want you to do that because this week I want you to follow the fast track laps. It's very important for you to do the laps on your own so that you can teach yourself these things. And then when you have a mentor appointment, she's not trying to teach you everything in 30 minutes. If you know the beginnings of what you should be knowing, and then you can get into talk to an experienced person, y'all are going to have a more intelligent, productive conversation. So do all that you can this week to learn the lifestyle. And then next week, make a mentor appointment. You actually can go ahead and make it now. It's in one of the laps, but do that for next week. And then focus on the fast track laps this week. And then welcome to the Shibboleth family. It is absolutely amazing. I'm going to pop over real quick into the laps. I want you to see where what I'm talking about. So this is the Shibboleth. Oh, I sponsored a new person. Yay. Um, so this is a... This is our website. You click on dashboard up here in this ribbon of words. If you have access to a computer, I think you're going to enjoy this a little bit more when you're doing the fast track laps on the computer. If you don't, um, I don't have my phone in here, but if you don't go all the way, if you're doing this on your phone, go all the way to the top, you're going to see like four little lines that indicates that a menu would drop down if you clicked on it. So click there, and then that's where you're going to see dashboard. But if you have access to a computer, I would want to do that on my, um, um, for the fast track laps if possible, that's just because I think you'll enjoy it more. So I'm going to click on dashboard. And if you're a new member, it's going to come up to your fast track laps for you. If you're a refreshing member, it showed up to that other page, just like mine did. And you would just need to click on fast track. This is lap one. Do you see how these are just little check boxes? You just come through here and you do these little tasks. Hover over this information I and then read that black box first. After you've read that black box, you click here. It takes you where you need to go. 
that black box is like you and I are talking to each other. What I want you to know about why you're doing that task. And if there's anything special that you need to know about doing that task, it's all going to be in that black box. So read the black box first, then do the task. Then read the black box and do the task. After you've done the tasks, you check the box. And it's just a little checkoff system. And you've got your welcome packet and guidelines here. You've got your combination chart here. You've got some combination chart and rules. You know, all of these things add on to your framework of knowledge about building this foundation that you need. And then down here, you can see it's taking you to the fast track and then the silver level group and all sorts of things. Now, I try not to leave out any learning style. Okay, so you get to do these things. And then with this video right here, you would get to watch, watch me because I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you how to do every single one of these things. And I'm going to talk about these things, kind of like what we're doing right now. So utilize these, these videos to your benefit. So you're going to get to watch it and you're going to get to hear it and you're going to get to do it. But look in lap two real quick. I'm going to click on lap two. What you've just done tonight, see right here where it says participate in the Sunday night live webinar? You just did that. So all you've got to do is go into lap two and check that box. But I'm going to show you something. If you click right there, there's already a video there on demand. It's just last week's video. I'll put this one in later. But do you see right here where it says materials right underneath it? Right here. This Shibboleth Lifestyle Overview Presentation, that's what I used tonight. So if you want to find that, again, it's right there. And here is a fabulous worksheet that you're going to want to use. In fact, it's in lap three. And in lap three, I'm asking you to start to fill this in. Because do you know what? What I eat is not important. What you eat is important. We got to figure out the things that you like that go in these categories so that we can make meals that you like, because you don't have to eat anything on Planet Shibola if you don't like. And let me tell you, I'm kind of a picky eater. And this lifestyle helped me, even though I'm a picky eater. And that's very beneficial to those of us that consider ourselves picky eaters. But we do have to figure out what we like that goes in those categories so we can make meals that we like. And I hope that makes sense. So do y'all have any questions before we hop off? Otherwise, I do want you to try to have a perfect day tomorrow. I would love to hear when we start chatting at the beginning of our webinar tomorrow night at 8 p.m. I would love for some of you to say that you had a perfect day tomorrow. Otherwise, we're just going to hop off of here. And what I would highly encourage you to do, because you might be sitting there super excited. Thank you, Dee. Um, you might be sitting there super excited. I would love for you to go on over into lap one and start working your way through some of those things. Okay. Awesome, Becky. Awesome. You're welcome, Robbie. You're welcome, Jen. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I want success for you. I really, really do. And um, I know that you can get it with this lifestyle because this is always what I wanted and it's fabulous. So I will see y'all in the tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Y'all have a great evening. Bye. Bye, Terry. See you tomorrow.